Figma has finally released a new exciting update which enables us to make our text responsive and that is variables for typography. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this new feature and you learn how to make your text responsive using variables. Let's dive in. All right, here is one of my projects and usually for my projects, I use text size because up until now, I couldn't use variables for my font sizes, but that's no longer a limitation. Here, as you can see, I have these text styles. I have three display text styles and I have three text text styles. You may use a different naming convention. It doesn't matter. What matters is the process I'm going to show you. So here for this hero section, I used my text styles. As you can see, each of these text layers is connected to one of my text styles. However, if I go ahead and show you the properties of my text styles, you can see that they are not connected to any variables, but we are going to change that. We are going to create a few variables that we could connect to all these properties. The new Figma update allows you to connect variables to your typeface here. Also, you could connect your variables to the weight, to font size, which is so exciting. I know you've been waiting for this feature to line height, to letter spacing and paragraph spacing. So basically you can connect your variables to all of these typography properties. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can connect a variable to your typeface, to the weight and to the font size. So if you're ready, let's get started. First of all, I'm going to head over to local variables and I'm going to create a new collection here and I'm going to name it typography. Inside this typography collection, we need to create a few groups to keep everything organized. Okay. We need one group for our typeface family. We need another group for our weight and another group for the font size. Okay. Let's start with our typeface family here. I'm going to click on create variable and I'm going to create a string variable because actually we are going to define our typeface name here. So here to create our group, I'm going to type typeface forward slash family forward slash display because as I showed you here I have two font families here display and text you may name it heading body etc it doesn't matter so here I created this typeface group and inside I have this family group all right okay for the name I'm gonna leave it as display but here we need to define the typeface name all right for this project I'm gonna use the plus Jakarta Sans typeface so I'm just gonna type plus Jakarta Sans Make sure to double check the spelling. It's so important. Now I'm going to go to the family group here and I'm going to right click here, duplicate this variable. And this time I'm going to type text and the value is going to be the same because I'm going to use the same typeface for all my text styles. However, I created this additional variable to show you how you can use multiple typefaces when you are using variables. So you'll find out why I created this one by the end of this video. All right, our family variables are ready. Now let's move on to our weight variables, okay? I'm gonna go to typeface and I'm gonna create, again, a string variable. For the weight property, you can either use a string variable or a number variable. What do I mean by that? If I head over to my text styles here, as you can see, I've used four different weights regular, medium, semi-bold, and bold. Each of these weights has a unique number value as well. For example, 800, 500, 200, okay? You can either use those number values or you can use their aliases like regular, medium, semi-bold, and bold. If you don't use many, many different weights in your projects, I highly recommend to stick with these names. It's gonna be much easier for you to keep everything organized, okay? So here, I'm going to create a string variable and I'm going to name it regular and the value is going to be regular as well. Now we need to create another group. So I'm just going to right click on it, hit new group with selection and I'm just going to call it weight like that. Now I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to name it medium, copy it and paste it here. Again, the spelling matters. Otherwise Figma cannot connect it to the proper weight of your typeface. Okay. So keep that in mind. I'm going to duplicate it. This one is going to be semi bold and the last one is going to be bold. All right, great. Our weight group is also done. Now it's time to create our font size variables. I'm going to go to typeface and I'm going to create a number variable. And here I'm going to type SM. I'm going to duplicate it. This one is going to be MD. Let's duplicate it. This one is going to be LG. Duplicate it. This one is going to be 
x large, duplicate it. This one is going to be 2x large. And finally, we need to have 3x large. Okay, I just created six number variables. Why? Because here I have six different font sizes. All right, what about the values? For the small one, I'm going to type 14. As you can see, the font size of my text style is 14. The next one is going to be 16. The next one is going to be 20. Next one is going to be 30, 36, and finally 60. All right, great. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and select all these variables, right click on one of them and hit new group with selection and just name it size. Perfect. Now it's time to go ahead and connect these variables to the properties of our text styles. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is head over to my text styles. And from here, I'm going to click on this little icon, edit style. And I'm going to start by connecting my typeface to my typeface variable. Okay. So I'm just going to click here, click on this icon. And from here, I'm going to choose typeface family display. Then the weight should be connected to regular and the font size should be connected to 3XL just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same thing for every single one of these text styles. And I'm going to fast forward this process. Okay. All right. For my text family, I'm going to show you something here. We need to set the typeface to text instead of display. Okay. It's so important because as I said, I'm going to show you how you can modify that later. All right. It's done. I've just connected all the variables we created to my text styles properties. So now let's say I want to change the font size of this headline. Okay. What I can do is go to local variables. I can go to size and I can just change this one 3XL. Okay. I'm going to change it to, let's say 72 for now. And as you can see, it's immediately changed. However, the interesting part is yet to come. I'm going to show you how you can create responsive font sizes for different devices. For example, for desktop, tablet, and mobile. Okay. Because usually for different devices, we use different font sizes as well. For example, on mobile devices, we may use smaller titles. But before I show you that, I'm going to show you how you can change the typeface of your text. Here we used one typeface for all our text styles, right? For the display and text family. But now let's say you decide to change a typeface for your text family, okay? For the description for smaller text layers. In that case, since we used two different families for our text styles, we can simply head over to our text variable instead of display and simply change its value. Okay. Let's say you want to use the inter typeface instead of this plus Jakarta sans typeface. So I'm just going to type enter and just look what happens when I press enter. Did you see that? Now all these three text styles are using this inter typeface. Now let's say you want to change the heading typeface as well. I can simply change it to enter or any other typeface. There we go. It's interesting, isn't it? All right. Now it's time to actually show you how you can make these text styles responsive. If I go to the size group here, I can create another mode right next to this one. And I'm going to name it mobile. And I'm going to name this one desktop. I'm not going to change these three small font sizes, but let's change these three display font sizes. For example, this one could be changed to 40 instead of 60. This one could be changed to 30 and this one could be changed to 24. Now let me show you how it works. Here we have the desktop version of this project. Okay. I haven't designed the mobile version of it, but I'm going to show you how it works. If I select this desktop frame and I head over to the layer section, I'll see this icon by default. It's set to auto. Okay. I'm going to set it to desktop. And nothing changed. That's fine because we are in the desktop mode and Figma is using all the values of the desktop mode for this desktop version. Now I'm going to hit A on my keyboard and I'm going to pick one of these phone frames like this one. And let's say you want to take this container. I'm going to copy it, paste it inside this one. And you want to design the mobile version of this project. Okay. I'm going to make this container a bit smaller like this. If I select this headline, you can see that it's still using display XL bold and the font size is still 60. But look what happens if I select this font frame, head over to layer 
and just connect it to our mobile mode like that, all these text layers have been scaled down because now if I select one of these text layers, it's still using display Excel bold. However, since we are in the mobile mode, it's using the smaller value that we just set here in our local variables, okay? So right now it's using 40 for the title and these are intact because we didn't change them for the mobile mode. Now I can go ahead and adjust all the padding and just make the container a bit smaller like this and align everything like that. It's so quick, isn't it? You can also change the typeface in different modes. Although it's not recommended, I'm just gonna show you as an example. Here, if I go to typeface, as you can see now I have two modes, desktop, mobile, and let's say for mobile, I'm gonna use a different typeface, okay? So here, I'm just gonna change the typeface to plus Jakarta Sans, and just look what happens now. Now we are using the inter typeface on the desktop version, and the plus Jakarta sense on the mobile version. It's so interesting, isn't it? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have a great day and see you next time.